Stadium for live coverage of Reading against Manchester United. It is uh, a match that is being played in front of supporters here at the Medeski, and uh, I might give you a clue that we are heading up to Christmas time here in Berkshire. away team coming out first here at the Modeski Stadium of course the guidelines that the sets of players have to adhere to to ensure that uh, they remain safe in the current situation so the uh, unbeaten Manchester United are the first to emerge and then cheers from the home fans as the Reading side come out here. Four draws in a row coming into this match, including that recent one all against Bristol City. Their uh, fourth successive one all draw in the WSL. It's a slightly drizzly. Berkshire for these two sides and uh, Helen Conley the referee steps out with her assistance uh, there Tobin Heath recently named the November player of the month and so this is how the two sides will set up uh, Reading making just one change from the team that drew one all against Bristol City. And it is a first start for Emma Harries up front. She's uh, come off the bench three times this season, the Reading Academy product, but uh, starting up front for Reading this afternoon. As for Manchester United, also just one change for them from their 2-0 win away against Aston Villa. Uh, Lauren James is replaced by Kirsty Hansen up front. The Scottish international uh, Lauren James among the players who is injured for Manchester United. And just as significantly, uh, Jackie Gronin uh, starts today. She had to come off very early in that uh, win at uh, Aston Villa due to a head injury. Uh, Tobin Heath uh, scoring two goals already during her time with Manchester United in the Women's Super League. One of those goals uh, against Manchester City, which I'm sure will be well remembered. Reading team with last few words amongst themselves before they get underway. The uh, Emma Harris, the uh, player who will be making her first start today. Fantastic opportunity for her in front of a home crowd. Also, of course, here at uh, the Medeski. Helen Conley, the referee this afternoon. Uh, there was some controversy in the uh, game between these two sides last season uh, when a, a penalty was awarded that uh, perhaps in retrospect should not have been. And uh, on the referee's first whistle. With Manchester United standing over the ball. So the taking of the knee by both the players and the managers and uh, we are off and underway at the Medeski, Reading hosting Manchester United. And 
quickly with the visitors on their uh, right wing. The Manchester United manager named the manager of the month for November as well. Of course, an experienced defender as a player and uh, now leading her team to the top of the Women's Super League table. She'll throw in from Reading, dealt with by Hayley Ladd, who will launch it forward and then uh, will be turned back to Maloney in the Reading goal. Just wondering, Jane, what you're expecting from this match this afternoon? Yeah, well, look, tactically, it should be a good contest because you've got one team in Reading who play predominantly through central areas, lots of numbers through the centre, playing with that diamond midfield, usually, with two up top. And then we've got Manchester United, who are renowned for their wide play. So it's going to be really interesting to see which comes off uh, the better. And right now we're seeing that wide play and uh, looking at the 2v1 situation being created in this right-hand side. Uh, the ball is with Heath. As you say, trying to go on the overlap, the clearance will take it out of play and it'll be an early corner here at the Medeski, just waiting for the ball to be uh, retrieved. So an early opportunity for Manchester United, an early test for Reading. Heath, the player standing behind this early set piece. Cleared at the near post. Kept in play by a Batia. Forward to Heath again. Able to turn the ball back and a promising chip in. That has to be headed uh, by Cooper out of play and a uh, a second successive corner for Reading to defend and Manchester United to take, Jane Ludlow. Yeah, and we're seeing again, you know, that wide area focus from Manchester United. Good fullbacks, attacking fullbacks, but really good wingers on this pitch today for them in red, too. Well, the first corner was a short one. This one uh, just a little bit further into the six yard box, but Reading able to clear. Still low. Picked up by Hansen. Hansen. Yeah, and I do think, look, the, the red and full backs to, today, sorry to interrupt them, will, will have a job on their hands, you know, because of how they play uh, organisationally red. And there will be times where their full backs have to deal with more than one player and, uh, players and have to do a really good defensive job. Well, this is relentless, isn't it? We're less than four minutes into this match and there's just been a series of corners for Manchester United. Uh, Heath having taken two on the far side, now with one on this left-hand side and again looking for her teammates. It'll uh, drop to Toon, who isn't able to shoot through a, a series of uh, Reading bodies. A flag is raised on the far side and... As you say, Jane, I think Reading are expecting to be very busy in defence this afternoon. Yeah, but look, good organisation from that set play there, you know, getting their lines up, up quickly on the second phase, not allowing Manchester United that opportunity to get behind uh, the back line there and get a shot off. So even though they've had to deal with, what, three in a row there, you know, they've dealt with them effectively. But it could, hopefully for Reading fans, it won't be a trend that runs through the game today and they'll have to actually get a foothold in this game now as it, as it progresses. Some great noise from the home supporters as uh, Reading have a rare opportunity to get on the ball and that uh, Fishlock actually played the ball uh, off the referee who didn't step out of the way <laughs> so uh, that's a bit unfortunate isn't it as it looked as if there was a promising break there for the home side instead it will be uh, turned by Cooper to her left hand side uh, back to uh, one of the new additions to this Reading team it's uh, out to Farrell Williams to James, not quite to Williams. Uh, United with the interception, picked up by Toon, deep inside her own half. The ball uh, running back into midfield. 
Yeah, and look, what, what we see with Reading as a trend of what they've shown this season and last season is they do like to play with lots of numbers fairly close to each other, small, you know, sh short combination pass options, which also allows on a transition when you lose the ball, you have a lot of numbers in the area and you can press quickly. So, you know, the trends from a Reading perspective are those things. Tight combination play, you see all those numbers in the central area of the pitch there. So they don't generally use width very well apart from when they get their full backs higher on the pitch. So that combination play is going to be key for them in central areas. But uh, obviously, this Manchester United team like like to have time on the ball. So uh, it'll be interest. It'll be an interesting concept uh, contest today to see how it develops and who manages to get the foothold in this. It was a first touch of the game there uh, for Mary Earps in the Manchester United goal. There's a, an opportunity perhaps for Harding to put a cross in. The Reading captain, decent ball in from the left-hand side, but just too high for the players inside that 18-yard box. Yeah, she'll be disappointed with that. Look, one of the strengths and probably one of the main reasons that Tash Harding is playing in that front row now for Reading is her ability to, to stretch back line. She's looking to run in behind a lot. And, you know, the last opportunity um, showed that, but obviously the final detail of that cross wasn't uh, what she'd expect. Throwing comes off a Reading head. So Eicheland, promising ball in from her. And, uh, well, Harding, who was inside the six-yard box there, just seemed to just drop uh, down onto the pitch. Now with Fishlock, and it's high from her and into the... Yeah, good opportunity there. The yeah, good opportunity there for Reading, but not quite again. You know what? That, that obviously Jess would have preferred that to be on target, but um, good play here from Reading from Eichland on the right hand side. And yeah, it goes past everybody, doesn't it? This first cross, obviously, uh, hoop shirt didn't manage to get on on the end of it, but neither did uh, a red shirt. But a chance gone missing there for Reading. Eichland with that. Promising cross. Yeah, Norwegian international. And now it's uh, United having to do a bit more defending. Ball won by uh, Hansen. And drops back to the Reading defence that roll through midfield this time and they look up again Reading this could be a decent ball in again from the right wing it'll drop back to Fishlock Fishlock with a right footed effort and uh, it's uh, bounced just up behind the goal mouth and uh, well she's well, look, second opportunity in the space of, what, two, three minutes for Jess? Edge of box, something obviously um, Manchester United needs to tighten up on on those phases around the edge of the box because you don't want to continue giving red in opportunities like that. You know, I've seen Jess score many a goal like that and she'll be a little bit disappointed that it didn't dip and go in the back of the net. I was going to say, that's the kind of, that's what we expect from her, isn't it, Jess Fishlock? She likes to sort of look up from that kind of distance and, and really shoot with a bit of power. Yeah, but look, she'll be enjoying those moments right now. But like I say, she can step up a level with regards to the uh, execution. Um, but something that uh, red shirts need to tighten up on around edge of box, giving people time to, to get those shots off. Let's remind ourselves that Manchester United had that series of corners very early on uh, at the start of this match. And I think Reading have kind of grown into it, haven't they, since then? Yeah, look, it is a clash of styles or trends, I guess, with the, with the both teams today. As we've said, you know, one has a priority to work in wider areas of the pitch. And now we see the youngsters, Harris, running in the channel and uh, good defending in the end by, I believe it was Gronin. Good recovery defending by the midfielder there. But yeah, look, two different kind of uh, focuses in how they want to play the game. But it will cause Manchester United problems defensively with the amount of numbers that Reading do put in tight areas of the pitch. And as we're seeing for the first 10 minutes, they are coping with it, but they're, they're a little bit disorganised at times. Liner for the home side, the Norwegian international. Short throw comes back to her, rolls it dangerously into the area. It's a Harris ball. Again, looking for Harding. And they're 
really trying to find those little chinks, aren't they, on this right-hand side to pull the ball into uh, to just inside the six-yard box. Yeah, look, they do make it difficult for opponents. I mean, Kelly Chambers highlighted earlier in the in the programme that they, they expect to get more points than they have so far because they are playing well, they're combining well, but they're not managing to get that finish. End product, as we've seen here, good opportunity again. Tough one for Tash Harden to get on on, uh, on the goal because of the angle she's coming at and the pace of the ball. But, uh, you know, it's an opportunity again. They're getting in that uh, Manchester United box and creating opportunities. So I'm sure they'll be relatively pleased so far. Launch long from Earps. Just Hansen just slightly being squeezed there by Cooper. And the referee says that will be a free kick. Yeah, good hold-up play from Hansen. You know, it is a tough challenge in the end from, from the defender. And, oh, you could say she's a bit hard done by, you know, there was ball contact, but I think, you know, she has pulled on her as well, so... You see him given, but good opportunity here now for Manchester United. Long-range free kick at Toonan. He for the players standing behind it. I think it'll... Uh, well, I thought one of them was about to take it, but there was a bit of hesitancy before eventually Heath uh, does turn it in, and uh, it's going to be Liner who makes the contact to take it out, and it'll be another corner for Manchester United. Yeah, as you mentioned, good first contact there from the defender and, uh, you know, angled it out of place. So There's no danger, but they are having to deal with another danger now from the corner. Plenty of players racing to try and get onto this corner. Again, it's cleared by Reading, but will drop back out to the control of Heath. Short to Toon. Toon trying to get away from her player, is able to curl it towards... Maloney in the end, but uh, I think easy for the Reading goalkeeper that time. Good play by Ella Toon, though, wasn't it? You know, playing around that defender. Um, good play. Uh, final product wasn't what she wanted, but really good play. Uh, 1v1 in the wide area from Ella Toon. And, and, and the reason why we've highlighted her at the start of the programme, you know, she's a player who's in really good form this season. Eichland looked to run forward and then uh, chose to turn it back to her defence. That's with Maloney again. She will uh, give it short to Cooper and get it back again. Two players just uh, exchanging passes for a uh, different selection of pass. Interception in midfield that chipped forward again though into the Manchester United half and it's Harry's who's racing after this she's just being held off the ball by uh, Millie Turner but uh, sorry rather uh, Kirsty Smith the uh, player just keeping up with Emma Harry's we have to remind ourselves this is her first start and she's full of running right now isn't she she's getting in behind this defense and causing them problems Liner with a throw in and uh, it'll go out of play. Uh, Galton helping out in defence. Bit more noise being made by the home fans. With Toon. Chased forward, but uh, really good block there by Bartrip. Not sure if she uh, needs to pull her socks up after that one, but uh, comes back to Cooper, who will turn it back to her goalkeeper. Really nice. Uh, Grace Maloney recently made her first senior appearance for uh, Ireland and posted a, a photo of her as a, a youngster in her Ireland kit. Just talking about that being a dream come true, uh, something that she was able to achieve I'm sure that's special isn't it that day when you make your first senior start Jane yeah and Grace has been in and around that squad for many years now so it's nice for her to have the opportunity Heath able to pull this back oh and that shot just wide that was Kirsty Hansen that ball pulled back to her and she struck it and it looked as if there might be a test for Maloney who we were just talking about there 
Good play here by Tobin Heath. Two around her, still manages to get that cut back. Oh, and I think, do you know what? I think it's come off her shin, hasn't it? So she hasn't actually made great contact in the end. She's sliding to try and get the contact. And unfortunately for her, not quite getting what she wanted from it. But good opportunity for Manchester United. Three goals already in the WSL this season. Oh, and uh, Jess Fishlock gives it to Toon, and that could be a real gift, but uh, Toon didn't take the opportunity. I think maybe squared it rather than going for the shot herself. And uh, it will drop back away into midfield. And that a gift not taken by Manchester United. Yeah, it was a risky one, but to be fair to Jess, as soon as she realised the error, she got back in and won the ball, or did enough to put the player off to make sure there wasn't an easy goal scoring opportunity from it. Ball with Williams. Heading looking up from the halfway line. Comes up to the head of Fishlock and Earps had to come out do you know I'm not sure whether the two Reading players got in each other's way then yes. because they looked a dead cert to get to that ball first didn't they and uh, if we see a replay it'd be really interesting to see they seem to pull out but we're just looking at the the Jess Fishlock mistake here but look you can see her recovery straight away Ella Toon will probably be uh, knocking herself that she hasn't managed to do more with it but, uh, yeah, if you just look at this now, oh, for me, I thought Emma Harris was in for that. But uh, obviously, maybe thought Tash Harding was, was the more likely to get the touch and they've left it for the goalkeeper in the end. So scares at both ends in the last minute or so. But uh, goalless currently. As United try to race down that right-hand side and Liner just pulling... Uh, Galton back and uh, just waiting to see if the referee might uh, be producing her first cards of the afternoon. And uh, yeah, the referee having a word with the Reading right back and showing a yellow card to her. So the first booking of the afternoon. Well, look, we did say early on in the game that the Reading fullbacks are going to, you know, have a tough challenge today. And it's unfortunate for her right now that she's made that decision to end up getting booked because it does put her at a little bit of a disadvantage for the rest of the 70 minutes of the game. Hansen able to keep her footing. Two to Smith. Rolls out to off Harding will be another corner for Manchester United and they're, they're notching up these set pieces for the visitors, Jane. Yeah, they're not really um, creating goal scoring opportunities from open play, but from the two I remember right now, but they are getting a lot of set play opportunities, aren't they? So they're getting high up on the pitch and obviously there's some good defending happening to clear the ball, but a uh, fair few uh, set plays knocking up right now. Another corner for Heath to take. Uh, this one will go to the far post and actually uh, gets headed on by Bartrip, but kept in play by United on the right-hand side. The uh, initial shot is blocked. It's then lifted in by Amy Turner and will bounce just once on its way to Grace Maloney. I think uh, Casey Stoney was talking about needing patience from her side today against Reading. Uh, do you understand that now, having seen the first 90 minutes or so, Jane? Well, yeah, look, you can see the trends in the game. There's, there's times where Reading have good possession of the ball and they are causing Manchester United problems with the overloads in central areas that they create. Um, but, you know, what we've also seen is when Man United do manage to get the ball and they get it out into wide areas early, they, they can be effective and they're creating opportunities. The referee maybe just has to uh, be aware of where the ball is going next. She uh, is getting slightly in the way of uh, another pass as it drops to Heath, who chips it out up forward to Maloney. Yeah, that was a different one. Yes. <laughs> she obviously saw um, an opportunity there. It hasn't might managed to come off, but uh, why not? If she sees the option, you know, World Cup winner, you wouldn't uh, doubt her, would you? So 
But from the drop ball situation, it's interesting these days, isn't it? Because obviously if you lose the ball and you're in possession, you just get it straight back. There's no kicking of shins or anything that goes on with a drop ball these days. Smith. Back to Smith from Galton. Now square, just bouncing around. Comes away off Hansen. Up to Badger on Manchester United's right. The first Spanish player to be signed by Manchester United. Yeah, and look at that at last instant. Um, what you are seeing from Redden today is some, a really good work ethic from their, their forward players. There's times we've seen Tash Harding defending edge of box. We've just seen exactly the same from Emma Harris. You've mentioned, you know, it's her first start, but she's, you know, working particularly hard for the team right now. Fishlock out to Liner, and uh, well, Jess Fishlock gets back to her feet. Uh, Groynham was the uh, player who brought her down and just coming in behind Fishlock and uh, the referee I'm sure had a decent view of that ball with Cooper now and uh, another whistle blown by the referee be a free kick for Reading deep inside their own half. I think Reading will have been, I'm um, certainly would have been disappointed by their most recent result, the uh, their fourth one all draw in a row, Jane, but that against Bristol City. Yeah, and, and they probably would be disappointed because of where Bristol City sit, you know, no, no disrespect to them. I think they're working very hard this season and are managing to get the results they would like. Um, but it would have been a game that Reading would have um, expected to get the three points from. Here it's with Harry's. Harry's uh, really utilising her long legs down that uh, left wing. She's been out on this right-hand side as well, so uh, seems happy to move around the front for Reading. And it'll drop all the way back to Maloney, who will just uh, pass it between herself and Cooper. Actually out to line up and a block by Hansen to take it out of play uh, just behind Kelly Chambers who uh, is watching on at the edge of her technical area somebody you know very well Jane Yes, look, a good friend of mine. Um, don't get to see her as much as I'd like, but a good friend and look, I'll be forever thankful for Redding and I'll continue this in a minute. This could be a chance though. Galton doesn't go for the shot herself, leaves it for Heath. Heath shaping to shoot. Important block for Reading. That's still not away, but the referee has already blown her whistle. Yeah, and look, going back to Kelly Chambers, I think she's done a fantastic job at the club. And, and as I was saying, I'd be forever grateful for the opportunity she gave me uh, many years ago now to step into management and look after the team and work alongside her. Uh, really enjoyed working alongside her, really knowledgeable coach. And, you know, she's taken the club. Gosh, she's been there for, for many, many years since she was very young and, you know, really invested in, in growing this club. And, uh, you know, they've made so many strides over the last few years. But, but I know how competitive she is. She wants to keep developing the club, keep growing it. And obviously keep climbing the table too. Talking about that Bristol City game, I think they had 30 attempts in that game and uh, only managed to score from one. So uh, it wasn't for lack of trying. It's just about being more clinical, she was aware of. Uh, Eichland, block ball taken out. Have Reading got themselves a corner here? I think it's a throw in on this uh, near side. For liner to take very close to the uh, corner bounces just over harding in fact bounces a couple of times on its way out of play yeah good opportunity gone missing there for them bit of a mix-up with uh, what was supposed to happen but um intriguing game so far uh, opportunities at both ends for the two teams and uh, it's a good uh, it's a good competition right now isn't it
United uh, breaking down the left-hand side. It's Tobin who's cutting in from that far side of the pitch, leaves the ball for Toon. Toon with uh, an effort that bounces once on its way out of play. Yeah, and we see Ella Toon, you know, picking up those spaces, finding those pockets to play in, and, and I think that's probably a second or even third shot of the game so far, I believe. So, you know, managing to find those pockets of space on edge of box and getting opportunities, and we're just looking at, obviously, uh, somebody who, who I'd imagine would like to be on the pitch today, Dan yes. Carter, who, again, is, you know, a, a top-level forward. As you say, a player, a new addition to this Reading side, but... Uh, Instead, it's Emma Harries who's started today in place of the former Arsenal player. Spent 11 years at the club, achieving all sorts of honours during her time there. But I think we've we've seen maybe why Kelly Chambers has chosen to start Emma Harris in this game so far, Jane. Yeah, well, look, she obviously trusts her. The, the youngster must be doing very well in the training environment. Oh, the goalkeeper's come well out, Maloney, but uh, it was a ball in from Hansen. But I don't think any of her teammates were able to take advantage of that. And, uh, well, it was Gronen initially who played the ball forward to Hansen. And, well, I don't know why Maloney made the decision to, to come out so far. And it, it meant that Molly Bartrip really had to mop up and, and deal with that danger. Yeah, a bit of a mix-up there, but what we did see is Hansen having uh, a bit more speed uh, than uh, Cooper at that point, and the goalkeeper probably fe felt uh, she had to cover, cover, be cover him behind, aware of that, maybe the, the, the pace mis mismatch that's going on there right now. So uh, she, just as all goalkeepers should, I'm sure you'll say, uh, Jane, just continues to shout at her def defenders at any opportunity. <laughs> Are they the loudest players in well, any team? Some would appreciate that, <laughs> others not. Look, they do have to be knowledgeable, and if they can help their backline, then it, it will be a positive factor. That's what I'd say for any team. Siobhan Chamberlain uh, with Regiment Chowdhury this evening for the uh, women's football show. As here, it's a ball from Toon. The block is by Bartrip. She's... Uh, Doing well so far in that Reading defence, uh, being kept busy as I'm sure she was expecting as Millie Turner comes across to take the ball out of play. Farrah Williams is waiting to take this throw in. She uh, only came back. Drops back into play, comes back to Fishlock, who's had a couple of uh, long-range shots just wide of the target already in this game. It's uh, a ball in from Liner, and it's uh, Harding who was chasing it. And uh, Amy Turner has to come across to put off the Reading captain and take the ball out of play. Uh, Fishlock forward, a lovely touch from Liner, and Amy Turner having to make sure that she did enough to uh, put off the advancing Reading player. It'll go out for a corner. And that is, of course, Farrah Williams. Short corner, it's uh, flicked on and, in fact, uh, flicked out the edge of the 18-yard box comes back to Williams who's a uh, ball in has to be well, drops onto the roof of the net he uh, came back from an illness Farrah Williams for Reading's last game uh, scored that goal against Bristol City last time out she uh, scored in the meeting between these two sides last season in the Women's Super League. That match played at Adams Park. It's at Reading very much utilising the Modeski Stadium this season, and it's great for them to be playing on this big stage. Yeah, look, those things, I think, are a massive plus for any club. And, uh, you know, having been involved in the club, seeing the facilities, etc., I think, you know, it's, it's the next step for them now developing as a women's team. Bouncing off players in midfield just comes away off uh, Williams, forward by Turner. 
The fans were able to return most recently uh, for that Bristol City game. And uh, masks and winter coats, as you would expect at this time of year. I think it's feeling uh, fortunately fairly mild, if not uh, a little bit drizzly out there. And I think they've been thoroughly entertained so far, even though it says nil-nil. I think it uh, has been an entertaining first 30 minutes, Jane. Yes, it has. You know, it's pretty even. I think if you look at the, the, the amount of possession each team has had, the amount of chances they've created, um, I'm sure both teams would have liked to have scored one of those chances by now. But no, it's a competitive match. And, they, you know, the, the teams are causing each other problems in different ways right now. Bartry. Oh, her pass forward, intercepted by Toon. Little control uh, to turn it forward to Hanson. One back, though, by uh, James for Reading. Uh, again, the referee just has to step out of the way of a ball back to Fishlock. Yeah, and just touching on um, Harrod James with regards to, you know, her strength. She is what, we, what I'd class as a pinch in midfield. She intercepts balls a heck of a lot. I think it was last season she was at the top of the stats in that sense. Ball with Harris continues to run. Uh, was she fouled at all she just slipped over there well from first look it seemed a bit soft but it'll be interesting to get a replay because she definitely feels that there was some contact and obviously she does well here against uh, amy turner you know going on the drive into the box and she's still running isn't she and amy turner just maybe with a hand on her side there the manchester united defender yeah you can see she's trying to get the block on her, isn't she at the other end though it's golton golton and maloney can't stop that from going in Leia Galton, left-footed strike, past Maloney and in. And Manchester United, just after the half-hour mark, taking the lead here at the Medeski. Reading nil, Manchester United won. Well, that must have been a quick break, because we were still talking about the chance and the replay at the other end, weren't we? And obviously, we've just caught the end of that now with Galton, and we're seeing the build-up here, and Gronham picking out a good pass, obviously, through the midfield. Hayley Ladd, who I know very well, who can pick those passes out with her eyes shut. And Galton, obviously, this great run down the left, 1v1, and you'd back her in this situation. I think, from a goalkeeper perspective, she looked back at that, be disappointed. She sold herself a little bit. She's left that, you know, ball side open, and obviously, a player with Galton's ability, lots of power through this strike and uh, she's not going to miss there is she scored against Aston Villa now scored against Reading in successive games a punch of the air from uh, Leo Galton well, it's one reason why we love the game so much as fans. You know, we can swing from one team to the next, can't it? And and you just you look at an opportunity one end, and within 30 seconds, there's a goal the other end. The fact that Grace Maloney got a glove to it as well, didn't she? But uh, still going in. Yeah, it seemed like she was already diving to her left-hand side when the strike actually left the foot of Golden. So an interesting one to look at again. Heath to Hansen, Hansen to Toon, and that's into the side netting. And having uh, got that goal, tails up from Manchester United. So often those balls have been coming in from that right-hand side, and this time Ella Toon at very close range. As Hansen was able to curl the ball around Bartrip, and uh, that time just ruffling the outside of the Reading goal. Yeah, and Hansen doing a great job in that 1v1 situation on the right-hand side there to just get around bar, bar trip. And, you know, she'll question whether she could have done better, but good opportunity again straight away for Manchester United. And Reading now need to, you know, keep their composure, make sure they lock this up. Hansen lays the ball back to Toon again, uh, still trying again to provide an assist for Ella Toon. Comes to the goal scorer, Galton. James... And, and talking about Leah Galton, do you know what? I absolutely love watching her play. I think, you know, uh, thinking back to last season, how effective she was, and again, how effective she is this season, plays a fullback or a winger. Toon, this time it's a cross that is being chased uh, by Hansen. So uh, those two players are certainly starting to link up and try and find each other in uh, the final third for Manchester United. 
Now Bartram will give it back to her goalkeeper. Ten minutes of the first half left to play. This, of course, a Manchester United side top of the Women's Super League table, unbeaten so far this season as Harris uh, wins the ball. Uh, doesn't go for the... I think uh, she... Well, the ball in the end that she was trying to pass to Tash Harding. What a shame that it just didn't have a bit too much... Uh, a bit more power behind it. She's really twisting and turning and causing this Manchester United defence all sorts of problems, though, isn't she, Jane? Yeah, she, she, if she looks back at that, she would have thought she should have taken the opportunity to play to the right-hand side. Because, look, Tash Harden makes a great run, but it's a run to take defenders out of the way, not necessarily to receive a pass from. And there was a good option on her right-hand side. But, uh, yes, good opportunity, and you're right. I think the youngsters are having a good um, impact in the game right now. But I'm sure she would... Uh, you know, she's a forward. When she gets those opportunities uh, to drive her people, she wants to do better in those instances. An experience that's... Uh, she's... Having here. Ball with Lads. Further away by Smith. In fact, it'll uh, drop out of play. Casey Stoney. Uh, I think she was she was sat down, I, I thought, uh, and almost until that goal went in for Manchester United. Just watching uh, patiently, as we were saying, and then that. Uh, on her feet, Casey Stoney. Well, the game's gone in a, in a way that she was planning, in, in, from what she said at the start. You know, they have been patient with 30 minutes in and uh, they get their goal. Um, but, you know, they've had to work hard to be able to, to get to that point. But they are, I guess, in the last 10 minutes, they are getting more of a foothold in this, aren't they? They're getting more ball time. Um, as we see here now, they're spreading the ball around and, and moving this red in defence around. Gronen, uh, straight down into the gloves of Maloney. Well, they have won all of their away matches so far, Manchester United, uh, scoring 12 goals and conceding just four in those games. Ball is with Harding, though. Turns uh, the ball backwards rather than forwards. Drops out to Wooden. Coming off a Reading head, and uh, United have to be careful as they clear the ball out of danger. All the way back to Bartrip. Fishlop, quick pass from her, but uh, well, United just hack it back up the pitch. Oh, bypasses Bartrip on its way back to Maloney, but uh, just being watched by Man United players as she's able to find a head in midfield and it's uh, back up into the air again just waiting for this ball to drop to somebody's feet Jane Ludlow <laughs> yeah it's a little bit scrappy isn't it that last sequence of play but Reddin have come out uh, with ball free kick opposition half for them just, Harris this time just uh, it was more of a coming together than anything yes. else by the look of it wasn't it Farrah Williams uh, waiting behind this long range free kick. A line of bodies. And both teams on the edge of the 18 yard box. It bounces dangerously inside there. And uh, well, it could have gone anywhere, but uh, it did in the end find its way to the boots of a Manchester United player. So many heads uh, trying to make contact with that. But United fortunate that they could take it out for a Reading throw it. With Fishlock, she uh, 
as two United players to get that through. A lovely back heel from Eichel and looking to play it back to Fishlock again. It's good recovery defending there from Healy Ladd. And, you know, the one thing I would say about Healy is she's probably one of the best 1v1 defenders around. Harris again racing forwards. This time it was Millie Turner she had to deal with. Back to Liner. Liner not quite finding the head of Harding. It drops behind her. Comes to Fishlock. This is kind of her range. But uh, this time a shot a block at close range. And now it's the goal scorer stepping from inside her own half. Plays it out to Hansen. Hansen's cross blocked by Cooper. A uh, Another corner for Manchester United late in this first half. Yeah, and what we are seeing now becoming a trend in the game is when Manchester United can break into those wide areas quickly, they are effective because there is a lack of cover there from a Reading perspective. Um, and obviously it led to the goal and uh, they are managing to, to obviously get another set play from that situation as well. So it's effective for the red shirts today. Heath, and it's straight into the side netting. It's a wasted opportunity for Manchester United. Well, that's not what you expect, is it? <laughs> From a player of her level, and, you know, she, she, that's probably something that infrequently happens. Well, Kelly had said that uh, she was after a response from her players after the Bristol City draw, uh, said after they lost against Birmingham, they uh, got a draw against Manchester City. So hoping for something similar today, trailing though by a goal to nil at the moment. Uh, the ball with Eichland who drops down under a challenge. Referee allows play to continue. It's uh, with Cooper and she finds Bartrip. Battle in uh, midfield, won by United. Uh, Heath, I thought, was on the shoulder of the last defender, but I think if that ball had found her, Jane, the flag might well have been raised by the referee's assistant. Yeah, it was close, wasn't it? Um, execution of the pass wasn't quite what it needed to be. But here we see, obviously, Manchester United in possession again. Oh, Toon threaded through. Maloney had to come out and be brave there. And she was outside of her 18-yard box as well, so I had to be very, very careful. But the advancing Leia Galton and Maloney had to make sure she got that right. Not long to go in this first half. The uh, Galton goal separating the two sides at the moment. Smith to Heath, who's come across to the left-hand side. Good sliding challenge from Cooper, who's able to take the ball back into midfield, uh, looking for Harris. And uh, Galton looked like she was in there. Grace Maloney out of her 18-yard box, but uh, slid down and stopped it with her legs. Yes, yeah, she did enough. I think she was a bit fortunate that Leah Galton didn't get a bigger touch on the ball because I think it would have gone past her. But, you know, good decision in the end. Harris on the chase, uh, being held off by Millie Turner. Smith into midfield and will uh, roll out uh, just behind Casey Stoney. Just waiting to uh, find out how much added on time we will have at the end of this first half. I can't imagine it will be a great deal. It has been a match that has uh, been fairly continuous for this first half. No, fortunately, uh, injuries or anything else to uh, busy the referee, except, of course, for uh, the goal scored by Leo Galton. James for the home side out to Woodham on that left wing. 
Reading uh, trying to go on the attack late on in this first half, but perhaps a chance for Manchester United to break. Uh, Heath and Toon, the players aimed for by Galton, finds a Reading head first, though. Uh, back out to United on their right hand side and uh, go out for a goal kick. Big signage behind uh, that Reading goal. Come on, you ours. The, uh, the uh, playing out the, from the goal is an interesting one for Reading today because they're constantly using Jess Fishlock in a very deep role uh, to make the decisions. Obviously, Grace Maloney is the goalkeeper, but it's Jess who ends up making the decision of where to play out. So into injury time here as uh, Harding picks up possession. Teammates running into that Man United box. Oh, need to be clever there, United. And uh, as Man United break away. Yeah, you could see why Farah was doing it, couldn't you? It just wasn't a piece on the ball. I think she uh, probably knows what she's doing. Uh, and it's uh, Leah Galton who has scored the goal that separates the two sides at half-time. As uh, two sets of players head back down into the tunnel. Grace Maloney uh, got a glove to that effort from Leia Galton but uh, couldn't manage to keep it out. So at the break here at the Modeski Stadium, it is Reading nil, unbeaten so far in the Women's Super League, Manchester United won. <laughs>